So as you know, we did that just to get an opportunity to do a little dancing and singing. But now, we are ready for the main event, which is Prof. the Honorable Prof. Irene K. Odote, the one who is responsible for building this building brick by brick. We would like to thank her, and we would like to introduce her. Also, today we have as chair, Professor the Right Honorable Professor, <laughs> Head of Department, Illustrious UNESCO Advisor, Akosia Pebi, and also we have the one who did the performance, Zablon Abdallah, who has <coughs> a rich tradition in the griot waves, a rich tradition in the singing and the chanting. So we would like to introduce all of them, and with no further ado, we will hand it over to the <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here this morning. And any time I have to do anything in Afghanistan, it's a pleasure to do that, because you know that my blood is here. My, prof my father is from and he came to the call in 1952, and I was a three-month baby. So all my 62 years is the call. And that's a lot of my I had two friends to the call. But it looks like of the four siblings, I'm the one who was taken after the academic uh, field. It's a pleasure to introduce Professor Irene Odote. She needs no introduction. But let me just say that on a personal note, she taught me in 1974. Wow. <laughs> 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 but when I found out we were doing history comics, and our professor, Ramon Ben, who passed away, he had hepatitis. It was, that was the time we did one exam, exams in June. So if you missed, you know, it was like a semester, so you could break and then what you now call doing the mid semester paper so we put it all together. So we are really, really hot. And from Sadu Bani proudly introduced, I remember so well the course she wore that day. So it's a red and yellow, you know she's proud. She wore a red and yellow clothes. She stood up and said, this is her first book out PhD, 1972 PhD, I am in Queen. And I was the only lady in the class of 20, including enough of men here, is Kali. There's the Christian ministry, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, a number of us. And I said to myself, PhD, woman, I'll do some great as my vision. <laughs> it took many years, but that vision kept ringing. Then, well, when I said much of national service, I went to teach at the Greek girls, came back to do my master's. She was my tutor in World Town. And she touched my hand so much. She did a beach party for us. I couldn't go. But she brought me food and said, tutor brings the student food. I never seen this by university, but one by one. It's going better and better every day. So she can find me Tuesday morning and then it's a man. But she says, man, I'm going to get ready for some work. I tell you, so what is she going to do with this? Man, I'm going to get ready for some work. I say, why don't you check? Yes, it's just like that. How can I say you? So I'm here with a two days notice from my mother. It's a pleasure to do this. So I tell you, we have a house for points. I need to go to the house. But Akosa didn't tell me that she did not copy my bad side. <laughs> she became a better version of myself. And I'm very proud of it. Don't make an attempt to calculate my age and all that. <laughs> I'm very young. I grow younger and younger whilst other people grow older. And uh, the topic I want to discuss this morning I didn't start from any academic search. And because I did not, I thought we were going to have a small conversation with my colleagues to share with them experiences I've had in the field so we'll get a good laugh. And then nobody gets up and says, hey, you are Skype. We are going there and the whole world is going to listen to you. In fact, I panicked at that stage. And then I rushed from department to department to look at those who were, talk to those who were experts to see whether I could find theories to match my wild uh, speculations. 
And as I went round, I said, okay, okay, okay. Why don't you turn this, this empirical <laughs> observation? Make it empirical. So you have an assignment. When I finish, you are going to tell me what theories I, <laughs> I should use for the work. So everybody, the theories here, you have an assignment. Listen carefully to what I'm saying, and you raise your hand and say, Professor, God don't love theories. But they are going to propound African theories now. We are not going to listen to the other, but we are, all of us, we will find a word to replace Creole in, on the Ghana context, and we are going to do theories afterwards, after you have the feast. So, why did I choose this topic? The word Creole came to me, and uh, it refers to a member of a class of poets, musicians, and storytellers who maintain a tradition of oral history in the Sahelian West region of West Africa. <coughs> For example, the activities of the group was documented by Ibn Battuta of the 14th century, a Berber tribe. But the word has spread beyond West Africa. And now, in the diaspora, you have African-American musicians and storytellers. And, uh, one of them was sitting there, Carter Smith, who was really chosen, given the title, Mother Griot. So here we are, that we have griots counted among many professions, and the fact is that there are words for them. Those words, I dare not pronounce them. You can see them there, in case I make a mess of the pronunciation, but just to show you the local names such every society will have a name. That is for the word Creole. And uh, so, because Creole was used by researchers who first operated in the Sahelian region, then the Creole <coughs> word has come to stay. But looking at all that, in a nutshell, we just call them mas masters of words and music. The Creoles are first and foremost artists, and they are masters of words and music. But I'm saying that they are also archivists. I'm also saying that they are historians. I'm also saying they are teachers. They are counselors and they are politicians. So as we do our presentation, we'll be finding out. So if you know griots by the time, I hope you'll be able to identify griots in your own communities and tell us how they are called. Because at the end of the day, we'll try and do a marking of Ghana and see who is who, where, and what do they do. Because this presentation is on Ghana. And it, it evaluates the activities of the, in the Ghanaian context. What do they do? And who did I identify in the Ghanaian scene? I, among the Dagoma, we have the Lumsi. And fortunately, we have live blues here, and this is what you saw. Zablon is a griot, and it's a, a lunga. Lumsi, the singular is lunga. That one is a lunga. So he'll be able to give us the real life experience, why they do what they do, and we get the experience. And then we'll be joined by Professor Nketia, who will come later, who has done a lot of work on ethnomusicology, so done a lot of work on, on, on in Asante. So they are pious, so, and hopefully maybe Professor uh, I know who will turn up. I don't know, but I'm expecting some of these old, older or younger people who have done some work. They will turn up and enrich the experience. So we have the Lucy. In Asante, we have it's more decentralized. You have more different people because there you have the like, specialization of different groups of people. They are doing the same thing, uh, practically the same thing, but they are coming from different disciplinary background. So there we have Kwajum 4, we have Achiami, we have Achema, the drummers, we have Abrafo. So you see that different names for these groups of people. And then among the Gandan men, we have the Wulome, that is priests, traditional priests. We have Amlakui, those who sing uh, for the gods, especially for the god, principal deity of the town Lapa. They are found in La. And then we find priestesses, Pelewaye, cults. They are priestesses of a cult. 
and you ask yourself, what by the time I finish you, and then we have grammar groups. Then among the Ebe, that is where I, ha I don't have much experience. Uh, they, you find them among Afa diviners. So when there's, if there's an Ebe here, you'll be able to tell us. So the Afa diviners are there. So I'll be able to select and talk about these people. And then, how? How did I? I'm a historian. Uh, what music do I do? In fact, people used to run away from me when I was singing in, in school because my voice was so bad. I don't know any music. Uh, but why am I doing this? <coughs> uh, how did I get my foundation? As I said, I did not set up to go and do research on group. I was doing research on other things. I was interested in collecting oral tradition, visiting the shrine, doing some. But this is reflection, looking back what I observed. So I got from in conversations with uh, the Asantini, Osetu Tutu, and um, the other fran traditional functionaries in Asante, some of the chiefs, and then Professor Kavdan Ketia, uh, I read his stuff and we had conversation. He was my boss in African studies. Here he comes. Hey, hey, Professor. Let's start with the old man. 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 let with you. And then I was privileged to lead a team of researchers to uh, the late Asante in his funeral. I was then the director, and I went there and uh, I observed. I've been to several Akwesidai celebrations. And then, uh, why was I there? Ask uh, the director, the archives. Uh, Menshia archives who were in charge of the Menshia archives. And as a historian, I got very much interested in the archives and tried to reorganize, help in reorganizing the place. And then I had this crazy idea that I was going to do an exhibition. So for me, exhibition is a way of reducing the, the intellectual stuff to a level that the ordinary people could participate. So let me teach them a bit of Asante history and all that culture through exhibition. So you can learn by just going around and seeing those pictures. So that was the award. I really wanted to do that. But unfortunately, the people were not, they didn't understand what I was doing. This crazy gang woman coming from Accra to do these things. So they were giving me <coughs> quite a hard time. So one day, we, but when we went there as a group, I let a delegation for, to welcome the new king. Lo and behold, everybody was greeting the king. And I was the director. Naturally, I felt I should greet. When I did that, someone said, hold it. You can't greet the king. What? So I stood there and watched my driver and all the others shaking hands with the king. And I was disqualified. I said, what life is this? <laughs> and so I went to search now. I didn't know whether to be angry. To me, but I was I was thinking, really. And Professor Mario Poku, the late Professor Mario Poku was there, and uh, Professor George Hagen. So when they said we should speak, they said I should speak. I said, I'm not speaking. I'm not speaking. You people speak, they didn't allow me to breathe their face. So I squeezed my face. And when we finished, they decided I had to. So I said a few sentences. And when we were leaving, I whispered to, to the Asante, I said, Asani. I said, why don't you adopt me as your sister or something so that next time I can shake your hands? <laughs> and he smiled. And that was how we, we sort of started uh, the relationship. So when I was going to do the exhibition that people didn't allow me, I went there, they were sitting in state, and there I was, I said, Nana, I want to do this, but please, I'm having such a hard time. Why don't you show me how to come to you uh, when I want something? And then I added, but you, you know that Kumasi Fuanye. 
and he first are laughing the whole group of people there <coughs> started laughing and then I turned around again you know, I was not supposed to speak directly to the king but coming from a crowd what did I do <laughs> and, and then I turned around again and said and I said what was there one was me and then the, the laughter got worse at this point one of them the son Nahini, said when I finished so he said then I, oh she's saying that add her to the jersey so that when she wants to see you I said, I do not want to join the class, but then I realized that I was in an environment of structure and protocol. Things are done in a certain way. Even when I wanted to greet the king when he was first installed, they refused because I wanted to mix with the crowd and look on it because I was a researcher. When I went, they stopped me. And I said, hey, my friend, if I be a man, with, with my kuntukuni and told you that I'm the director, I have an office here. Is that what you would have done? And he said, oh, Kafka, why didn't you say so? You go to the king, you have to announce your identity. We are dealing with identities here. So that's how I got to learn. I got to learn that I was in a different situation. There was structure, order, and they had reasons. They had their political philosophers who did the things they did for a purpose, only they could not write. So that was my first uh, encounter. So having done that, the king, I think, realized that this woman, if I don't take care of her, she'll be in trouble. So, so she'll be in trouble. So she more or less adopted me and gave me a free range in the place. And I did three exhibitions for him from 2000 to 2018. So what did I observe? So this is how I got. And then when I came to the Gandangme, I also participated in annual festivals. I, I witnessed the royal festival, Lachi, conversations with the Amlaqui. Then I also had conversation with Zafno <coughs> and all the people here. And uh, really, I also participated in festivals along the Pantic Coast. So I have the, this is, these are the people, man. Then, apart from that, all documents you know, of the 16th, 17th century, I was in the daily, especially the Danish document records. So this is how I got my information and I observed. Then I realized that, you know, we, I had this grand funerals, installations, and all that. They use a human voice and instruments such as drums, flute, horn, Saprewa and the God. And then they operate within a traditional style of oratory and music that is recognizable by society. Their art is handed down from generation to generation. There are such patterns, chronicles, they are working archives, I will call them. So they, they do this in set pattern, but there's also room for creativity and improvisation. But you know the set pattern, as soon as they start singing, you know that this is a uh, uh, for You know that they are playing the Tumpan drums. You know that this is the Amlak with the Pasong. They are sung, some of them, particularly on particular occasions. And so then, historian, because of that, they, what do they sing about? They sing history, they sing proverbs, they sing philosophers, philosophies. History, progress, and also. But then, as a historian, I also know, noted that there were a few distortions and inaccuracies and exaggerations. For example, in Assange, you have hidden histories. History, the concept of history is different from our concept of We think it has been transparent, everything there. But there, the purpose of history is to help you to think that you belong to a great group great leaders, so that you can fight on to preserve yourself. So history is to be uh, negotiated. History is to be consumed for a purpose. That add to stature. That add to that. So <coughs> that means some of the things that have had been not good things, you are not going to bandy it around. So you hear the fire, and they don't talk too much about a Kataman so where they were defeated. They don't talk too much about um, sovereignty war. They don't talk about Seychelles. You find if they are going to talk about it, then they probably will talk about it in the night, the night before Agosi died. 
when they do what is called ayan, they sing about for the ancestors throughout the night. And that's how many people will hear it, how many people know it. So there are histories that are hidden and for the audience. So if you want to know that, it means you have to go deeper and deeper and deeper. So history, the concept of history is different. But they teach, then there are teachers. They teach their own people who, they train people. You don't just become uh, a charmer or what not from, from there. Well, you, as a child, they train you. You are among them. You hear them. So they are teachers. They teach their own group. They also teach the rulers, the chiefs. So when you have become a chief, you are confined for a period of time where they teach you the histories, the dances the, of, of, of your people. So they are teachers. And then they also teach the public. Now I'll show a few this thing to show you what they are doing. I have some things on video, some of my video corrections. So the knowledge of the past, they teach the present generation. And they are the memories of the people. There are also advices, and you see that the Achiami and all that, for, for telling you the history, they are telling you what to do. And they are politicians and commentators. They can twist and they can rouse you. You know the way politicians will go and stand there and make us feel that if we vote for them, that's the end of our woes. And they, the people who the griots have a way of doing that, it was told that one day the king had a very important, I forgot in which king, it was one of those kind of conversations, so I didn't know I was going to bring, but I find out the historical part about it. He had to take a very tough decision and some of the chiefs, one chief had done something, powerful chief had done something, and he had to bring him to order. And it was so tough, he didn't know what to do. So what happens? They are brave and then they got up, they sang, they roused, they roused, and it's built on his emotion, built on his emotion. You are the greatest. You, you, if you say you cut off somebody's head, you cut off the head. You are like this, you are like this. I said to do, hey, 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 hey. By the time they finish, the king has grown taller and bigger and stronger and took that, that critical decision in the life of the people. So that they are, they have a purpose and they are, call them the politicians. They can manipulate the king, although they do it with proverbs and thorns and the whole range of things. That by the time the king is aware, he has taken the decision, he had to, to make him bold. You come from a long life of bold the ancestors. Then they are entertainers and performers. And in the, the music, according to the context and everything. So what are the challenges? Having said that, uh, do I stop at this point, Chairman, to, to show, or I finish and then we show the videos. Finish. Uh -huh. So we see what are the challenges. <laughs> we are bargaining the time. <laughs> so, you know, Western education gradually and then robbing the institution of talented performance. Now, you are born into the family, and you go to uh, New York, D.C., and then you go to Adisande, uh, or Achimota, or someplace, and then you, you miss out. And then, corruption also has sticked in. So many griots smuggle some names. You know, the history, they do it. You know, just that people do in the archives. Maybe you don't know. The Ghana archives, some people go there to do research, and then they smuggle some archival material into, into the stuff, have it stamped as authentic, and they come and use it as evidence in court. So they smuggle things, even if in our written and the National Academy, people are smuggling things. Some of the girls too, that charming, they also smuggle in information. I don't know, Zablo, do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> so, and so, so because of family and chieftaincy disputes, you know, you, you find your own you have to tell your own story. So there are many stories and many histories, so you find that. And, uh, you know, we also have the, the work brought into the modern sector. The modern sector, you have Professor Anketia, who uses his knowledge of the traditional uh, experience to create. So he's written there this. I remember when this uh, place was, um, we were going to reopen, Prof uh, wrote uh, something uh, and asked him about me and 
as I was listening, my head was growing bigger, I was becoming taller, and, and feeling that, wow! So this is what the chiefs experience when they hear these people. The effect of what they are saying on, 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 the, on the people. So at the end of the day, these, they, they, they look like entertainment. And then poverty, we talk of poverty, and uh, they are performing even all over the place. Uh, and uh, we are also have, you know, like, they say they become a plague in the society. Now when you go to the Zongos, during the naming ceremonies, you see them, and they fight with each other. Now how relevant are they to modern cultural development? During Nkrumah's time, Nkrumah was for the culture, right? You know, African personality. And uh, Professor Nketia, for example, did a lot of work. And uh, I remember they have a side of Mamachi or say a year or so Mamachi and Hinewa and the Shimam Bay. And we, we got to know that. And in Turanda, we have Ochiami Akufo. Ochiami Akufo, he will recite poems, he write poems. Uh, Professor Zaranadi has done some work on Ochiami Akufo, he's there. So you have these people who have been transferred from his Anochan from. The traditional, not transferred, but the knowledge of tradition into modern. So we have Professor Kedera, Professor Nidoho, who also died. We have Professor Tukwe Okan. I thought I saw him. Yeah, he's around. Uh, Professor Tukwe Okan, yes. When I was made uh, uh, this thing of what I wanted, he came and just gave a fantastic word, recital in Gang. And all those things. So this and uh, Prof. Wright Dergis for people when my people die. So how relevant are they culturally? Is that they are retooling themselves into the modern sector. So they are, and then we have a penny Adekun. He's so full of progress. Anytime he opens his mouth, Professor Adekun is with a problem. We have late Professor Kofi Awono. And then the music, you have a for the young people. A Brafo uh, basis his work on the Apaye. And Prof, am I right? Oh. I don't know. One of them. I get confused between a higher and all those things. But I know graph for you see. And then we come to religion. Who is the Catholic here? Who's the Catholic here? Have you heard uh, um, uh, uh, Sapo, uh, Bishop Sapo doing the mass in Asante? It's fantastic. Just listen. And it's like you are standing in court. He's praise names for God. They are so real that it transfers, it, 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 you, you get the spiritual, the spiritual nourishment by just listening because it's using a language you can understand, by using a concept, by using. So here you are, it's been transferred for so religion. We have it. There's a understand, there's a Pentecost woman too who does something like that and it's called. Jesus in the deep forest. The Pentecost woman who also does the praising. So what I'm saying is that they are still very, very relevant. And they are contributing. So we don't just see them uh, that uh, they are. But I came to the grill scene from my history. I went to look for history. And I collected oral traditions from Langa to Adafra, libations and all that. So this is how I started. So, but this is not work that can be done by just one discipline. The ethnomusicologists will do, the historians will pick our part, and uh, the people of literature will do their part. If I call Eddie and AC now, they can give their whole treatise on Griot. But the point is, we want to sit together as a multidisciplinary group, the historians, the the train people, and, and we sit down, and it should not only be, but it should be multi-generational. We get the older and the younger people, because there's a cleavage somewhere. The younger people have not been socialized into it. There's a cleavage. So we can do something that we can help, to help, we can do, to help the culture. And then, it has to be cross-ethnic and, and, and cross, uh, cross boundaries. Because if you miss, um, the thing, the, like Katamanso in Asante, they now are busy calling the Ulomo Katamanso Berma. So they are also saying, hey, we want the Katamanso war, as if they were the only people who fought. 
they fought with other people. But so what you miss in Asante, you get in Ghana. What you miss in Ghana, you will get somewhere else. Because the Ghana, on one I'll, I'll end this with a story. When I was looking for evidence, I went to the Shangulo, where the big shots are, and I said, can you tell me something? I was very young at that, I didn't have any sense than to be discreet. So I said, oh, can you tell me what it was like when you were ruled by the Akwamu and they got mad? Say, what do I do? These stupid people, how can they rule us? And they, 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 they. You know, it was an uproar about the Akwamu. How dare you even think that the man had been defeated by Akwamu people? So I sat there. But you know what? Right in that shrine, there are priestesses who will sing for you. And they will sing. And they will tell you, now, is there nobody in our Ah, oh, hello. You know, we've allowed our circumcised people to take all our children. They are singing, but they are religious functionaries. And they are taught. They go to school. They are taught history. They are taught how to commune with the dead. They are taught how to dance. They, they are taught all these things. So there, they are hidden. That's what I call hidden. So when you go, where you think you can get it, you may not get it, but it's hidden. Having said that, my, my other boss, you know when you are working with younger people, they become your bosses at one point. So he has come to stop me and say that I've spoken enough and they want to play. <laughs> they, they want to play so that you see, you, so that you have evidence of what, Victoria evidence of what I was talking about. And after that, I think yeah. we will have yeah, to discussion. So are you playing there yeah, now? Yeah. Thank you. Can we give it? These are their charm because at the installation of a two for a So their charm of a two for a century.
Uh, they are 12. So they sat there, they stood there, that's their job. And then the next group you saw were the Pajo four, who sing the praises. I called them, I asked Prophet, are they singing? All you hear is nay, nay, nay. No, 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 nay. Well, nay, that's all you hear. You don't hear. But only those who understand will understand. They call them each other, you know, the, the meat around the head. They understood and they understood it, but we didn't. I don't hear nay, nay, nay. But you know what? Sometimes I think they do it on purpose. They don't want you to understand. How else can they be specialists? If you understand. <laughs> and also, sometimes they are obsolete words. I read somewhere in, in one of the European records that uh, they sing in archaic language when they were describing those in Gadame and Accra. That the song they sing, the people don't understand. I did an interview with them just three days ago. And I said, What is the meaning of it? They didn't know. But they were trying to work out the mean and say, you don't know, just say so. And this is also the problem with education. We have become so educated, we are embarrassed when we are asked questions to say that this one we don't know. But the older group will tell you, this one lets me go and check and come back next week and you have an answer. So please, let's be humble enough to, to, to admit what we don't know and go and learn. So this is the Asante part, you see the Bible form, and they are proud for, you are supposed to cut people's heads. So what are you doing as griots? Oh, what are they doing in the literature, in the, uh, creating people, in the creating arts? But they are creating people, and you saw how they are swearing, many and many strong, where you say, 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 say. So they have a job, they are creating. So apart from cutting heads, they are also creating. So you see the contrast between, let's say, peaceful pursuit of creative industry and then, and then <coughs> this thing of cutting people's heads. We don't cut heads anymore. <laughs> okay, that's We cut sheep and we cut sheep. Okay, we've spoken <laughs> like that's a true Asante. I've spoken like a true Asante. So you see the Asante, we've had the teachers, the historians, and, and the, we've had the creative people and the Abrafo. This is it. And this is what we want to do for all areas of Ghana. To be able to identify such people, so we have a, 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 a this bridge. So let's look a, a bit at the academy. And I, I'm glad Professor Anitoho walked in. Prof, we don't know anything about the uh, other area. So I beg you, when we show the guy, just say two sentences take for me on the Afar Prince. I can't wrote them, but I don't have any. I'm glad you are here. So can we have the Kagami one? school 
and, uh, and they will sing uh, for you. Our time is short, so this one, later on, if one of these days, if you have a free time and you want to hear the full story, we'll bring it up. But today, I want you also to hear the voices of my great professors who are here. Later on, we can show that. So we turn the Gandangwe, and one thing I say, the concept of history, and I'm saying that if we work together, where it's missing in one area, we'll get it in, in, in another area. And so, how to build up and creativity is a core. Creativity for, for history, creativity for philosophy, for teaching, and, and for answers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Dothe mentioned about the Afan. Uh, that's very deeply embedded in the religious metaphysical tradition. Some of you may know about the Yoruba Ifa uh, divination system. What is important about that is the fact that the Ifa has a very elaborate system of knowledge. And then there is a medical part of it. There is no point in diagnosing a disease which you cannot prescribe a cure for. So the Ifa priest training goes beyond just finding out what may be wrong with you and what the causes might be, but also uh, suggesting performance, uh, what do you call it, uh, ways of dealing with your problems. It is based on one simple understanding. That there is nothing that can happen to you today which has never happened in human history. It's like case law. And what problem you have now perhaps could be uh, handled if you know about those it happened before and how they dealt with it. That principle is encoded sometimes in song. Saulia Plenao Pavela Fima Magani Saulia Plenao Pavela Fima Magani Pavela Fima Bahuhui Pavela Fima Magani Pavela Fima Bahuhui Pavela Fima Magani Saulia Plenao Pavela Fima Magani Saulia Plenao You are about to embark on a certain course of action and you have been warned know where you are going there's a big hole there don't go this was what Saoli had said the hole that is there is an ancient hole don't try it of course it's advice if you like you take it if you <laughs> like you can ignore it that's already setting a certain precedent. People who have gone that way before have given us caution. It doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't go. Perhaps it only means that don't try it in the night. So at least you can see your step. You go to, on journeys, there may be a hole there, but if you know you can well, find a way around the hole, but if you just close your eyes, that's why the training of the five devotees starts very early. Uh, if you are not, I'm on the Yoruba, for instance, if you are not apprenticed, uh, by the time you are eight or nine, it might be too late. And there is a huge body of knowledge you must learn. Sometimes uh, you, the, if you are a slow learner, understand sometimes they can help you with certain herbs that improve the memory. <laughs> I wish they could give some of us for our, <laughs> <laughs> our work in school. <laughs> but that's, that's highly specialized. But it comes in other forms as well, even in Proverbs. So a chief, one of the warnings that a chief will be given in one of those proverbial moments when uh, the specialist might be giving the chief warning. The community does not live with the chief. It is the chief who lives with the community. So if you're a chief, you think that everybody is there at your pleasure, uh, you have a problem. 
must learn from that. But you also have particular moments where the concept between fiction and history will be quite clear. When the old people speak to you, they can tell you folk tales. But that dog, you know, it's performing what? Fictional narratives. But there's also what we call hope to do. That is the closest word we can have, we can suggest for what? What we are calling history in English. I'm a guy to hold up your. This is where they will give you, you know, what they believe happened uh, in history. And you go, those of us who go to school, they always caution you. Uh, what you learn in a classroom is important and is there. But alongside that, you should also learn what you know, uh, the community, the elders have to offer. In that same system, you will have particular moments that are set aside for uh, history to be reenacted. I'm sure, uh, based on the little that I saw in that in, in that in those videos, some of the best moments are the moments of festivals. On a, on a festive occasion. History is being what? Reenacted. What is also important is that some of the most significant aspects of festivals don't happen in public view. It will begin in households, in the clan house, where the ancestors are invoked. And above all, the concept of what? Reconciliation. As to start with that. And it is when I grew up in the house of a paramount chief, and what was very clear to me was that whenever there was an occasion, say even a, a trial, a, a case being tried, they will allow with the young ones to sit in, provided you don't laugh, you don't talk. That is part of what? The training. So you will learn of, there was a major chieftaincy dispute uh, involving the paramountcy. It was during that that I got to know about the history of the entire community, the history of the stool, <coughs> and uh, all that goes with it. But, it, it is important that we, I think what, uh, the last thing I'd like to just say briefly is what uh, Professor Dote is uh, embarked upon. Documenting this history uh, is important. But how do you document it when most of it is not written? The archives of memory are there in different forms and I think that is the value of the various specialists who she is pointing to as the griots of our various communities. Thank you very much. We have a very interesting situation where we are looking at cattle that have been maintained for a long period knowledge passed on from generation to generation and still going on and we have come to see something that has developed over a number of years and it is important to think of it that way because the whole way of passing on from generation to generation it will mean that the historical thing is also a process and it is part of, of what makes today what it is. And there's a body of knowledge that has been passed on. And if you look at how we grow up in our society, 
we are picking up this body of knowledge gradually at various stages. There are things we learn at various stages as children, as uh, uh, so forth and so on. So there is a body of knowledge that we meet if you are a researcher involved. And there are people there, but they constitute a body of knowledge. And knowledge that knowledge that they use according to specific locations and so forth. Knowledge in which, the, which we grow up. The difference between them and us is that we may have missed that process. So now we go as researchers to you know, find out about that penetration. Think of it, and you will appreciate why the knowledge is still in the community, because the process, the historical process, passing on from generation to generation has been alive. So the person who is the expert now has grown up you know, in the field. And this was something that impressed me, you know, when I was looking back, because I happened to be a child of non-literal parent. And I could remember the events I went to from childhood, even having access to the <coughs> uh, having access to the, the sacred place because my grandmother had something to do there and accompanied there and so forth. So that body of knowledge that grows is the thing that we are facing. We are in a situation where we don't know and we want to recover the knowledge. Look at it that way. And you wouldn't be overwhelmed if you know that this is, this is the way the knowledge has grown. But you'll come to appreciate it. You'll come to appreciate why, when you go to some of the community, the children are following their parents, you know, they are growing up in the tradition. And I remember, you know, going to the schoolhouse and, and looking at certain I was a child there, but it was just, you know, the, visual thing. I was seeing something. It was part of my growing up. It is the knowledge that I was acquiring. <clears throat> so at some point, you have the people who have been through this, who are at the peak, at, at the peak, and may have also been trained by the more experienced people, so they become the experts with anyway. That body of knowledge is extremely important and getting access to it and understanding it and so forth is very important. But many of us may be going to that body of knowledge really as outside as outsiders because we have not grown up. But when you have had a little experience, that also helps you to explore, to ask questions and so forth and so on. And I think it's, it's amazing when you go to the people, and they will help you. Uh, many times, you know, I have recorded a, a dedicated group, and an old man comes and he listens to the group, and the young people who have led it, they are playing very well, but he stands there and then he shakes his head and goes. <laughs> and then they come back and say, Go and look for so and so an older person and so forth. And you uh, will, will do it because when they were playing, they were playing so fast, forgetting that the chief who dances to this music will be so heavily loaded with ornaments and so forth. You he will not be able to move that fast. <laughs> and so it was the wrong tempo and so forth. Little, little things like that. You know. Uh, that the, uh, the older people can can, uh, can can say about the younger people who are learning so forth. So going into uh, that, you know, it's not that those things are extremely important. And uh, we are learning really 
how to how to do research, how to become like them, how to investigate and so forth, and how to feel these things. And then so <coughs> when we have that body of knowledge, then the other challenge is how <coughs> we take this knowledge in our contemporary countries. Those of us who have been away from it now have that knowledge. And you want to the people have done it, how do we reinstate this in our contemporary countries? And the university and so forth is what we do. We have courses and so forth, but how do we do it? I like to think about it. And so the the material that we bring from the field are very valuable materials. Uh, when I was looking at the the the, the uh, and we have the old men. Some of them have been with this for a long time. Now they recite with me without thinking about it. But remember that they've been through the process of actually acquiring the knowledge. And not in our formal system, that, but in the whole of <coughs> other places. And everything you do in traditional society as a younger person is a part of the training. I remember my mother, you know, would always give me a little piece of land to sow my yam or things like that. But I will dig and the plant and my yam will be as good as her. <laughs> and one day my mother was college. She was explaining why my my yam was thin and so forth. She said when she decided the the the, the whole thing there, she went it goes down, far down, so that when the gap is growing and going down, it is not meeting hard surface. And so it can grow to the extent that it can, and so forth. And so forth. Well, that was a simple explanation. And I appreciate it, I appreciate it because she had rationalized the process. And, uh, and so, you know, if she was a teacher or something, she would give you all the methods of growing. So a little thing like that are in the community. And that is really the challenge when we are doing research and so forth. Get into the root of the matter here. You know some of these things. Uh, now, many people are doing the things automatically. Perhaps they believe people forgotten how they came to do it and so forth. But it's a big challenge. And I'm you know, saying that the important challenge for us is the whole thing that uh, we are acquiring this knowledge. We are systematizing this knowledge because we need the self knowledge. And in Greenland's time, we instating traditional knowledge, traditional was, was a, a, a political priority because we wanted to catch up with our own traditions. But when you know, then you also are faced with the problem of continuing. How do you go from there? That is where your own contemporary insights and so forth come in, so that you are continuing the process and you are relating to a path that you know but you also have a certain experience, a different way of thinking, and you are moving on. I, I just want to, to make this little statement so you can see the relevance of what you are doing here. Not just looking at this and admiring the old people and so forth, but thinking about the relevance of what we are doing. Because applying the knowledge is the next step. What do you do with this? How does this fit into? You have learned all those things from, from what you mentioned. What you know, how, I know, how do you do this? So you are also in a position to be creative, you know, because you are thinking about your own culture and how, how to how, 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 you know, what to do with it in your contemporary context and so forth. So let's think about it because I mean, now we have abundance of material. 
but the making sense of the material and the thinking about the future and so forth, and being creative. So that there is a, a creative transformation of tradition in contemporary context, which means that the root of it still remains, but there are certain other configurations that emerge in contemporary context that means up to the tradition. And that is how traditions grow. So our contemporary you know, tradition is not an isolated thing, but it has roots. But uh, they were giving us new petals and so can you imagine how difficult it is for me to stop my own father <laughs> and my mother who taught me, my father who birthed me and nurtured me and so on. So um, and I was telling her, when you brought the old man here to come and talk, and now you're telling me better to stop talking. And I've done it twice, that, that, and, and I'm saying this is a unique position. He's a 93 year old man, and we may not hear this again. So for us who are younger and we have more time, I think when we have opportunities historically, we should also listen. Other people want to talk, but I'm sure all of you appreciate the 93 old man. Right now, he's publishing a book, and Terry and I are organizing fans for him to publish the book. He showed it to us two days ago. Two volumes, 93 years old. How to be encouraged and inspired when we see the other people. So we'll just take two more papers. I took him. When I'm chair, I think I'm chair. Thank you very much. Um, I'm making just two points. The first is about my fascination with the functional significance of the work of the grill. Until Professor Odote mentioned the case where the Asantehini have to take an important decision, but he was inhibited by the power of the chief whose case was before them. And then the griots came in and chanted and chanted and emboldened him. That is only one aspect. The other aspect is that by their chance, they put that powerful chief in his place. They not only emboldened the Asantehini, but put that chief in his place by showing the position that Asantehini uh, occupies and things. So that is an interesting way in which the griots help with uh, the maintenance of the supremacy of the kingdom. I had a brilliant privilege of being asked to, 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 to work with uh, Otunfo Opokuwa when we were attending the service for uh, the departed uh, spouse. From the beginning from the door of the chapel, the Asatihini started, followed by the two griots, followed by me, and then the others. It took us about 50 minutes to get from the door of the chapel to where uh, Otufo was to sit. Then we take one step. Then we take another step. It went on like that. And I was enjoying it. Then when we came home, we were seated. The two four were seated. I was seated next to him. The griots were standing behind him and they were chanting. And as they were chanting, the two four was tapping his fingers on the arm of the chair and also at certain points joining them in the chant which and I realized therefore that he had gotten to know his own history and the chants it was very moving so when uh, 
2004, Osset Tutu came. I went for permission to do some research with the Greeks in Padu 4. I had interesting interactions with them and learned a lot. Um, now, the they really were telling the history, but if you are not close, you don't hear. I heard something. That's the same thing. And uh, so after the research, Bafo Ose Akuto passed away. And I wrote a poem, created a poem called Kwajum Four Chant for an Ancestral Envoy. This poem was published in the uh, service brochure. I deployed the structural principle used by the uh, Kwajum Four. I repeated my opening lines twice, uh, three opening lines. I repeated them twice in the structure of the poem, and it was very beautiful. So this is how we have brought the ancient systems into our modern way, among other things. I thank you. I just want to uh, illustrate the importance of uh, going to the elders and learning about the history. That is not everything that can be recorded on paper. And I remember my generation of uh, history students were taught that um, no value whatsoever could be attached to oral tradition. But then before I started my PhD, I was lucky to be appointed a linguist. Uh, one of the uh, chiefs near uh, that's Jamie Dunbar School, too. And that gave me access to the court, to the Ochinhene, and to the other chiefs. Uh, I remember the Fred died, and they were in conflict discussing all the chiefs. Special permission was given to me to be among the chiefs. I was the only one chief seated among them because that was when I was doing my research. And the insights that I got were fantastic. I couldn't have gotten those things from any other uh, one. But because the time is about, it just gave one illustration. Over the years, I have noticed that Were actually left in Accra as hostages. 
So from that story, that culture, how can the father be walking at the son the guy? Mm -hmm. So that is the explanation for that cultural thing you see always that the children will be walking, they are buying the car because he is his father. Mm -hmm. This is not something you can get from any explanation you can get from any book or any documentation. So it's very important that we as researchers be curious and anything that catches our eyes, we try to find this we, uh, we can do it. Well, we put our hands uh, to it. There's so many illustrations. I have another instance where I learned how, uh, I got the dates for uh, the foundation of Machimai. So, so too many things are going to do that. Yeah. But I, I'm just supporting what they're saying that don't let us shut our eyes to our own tradition, our own culture. But most of the things that we learn about, most of the things that we want are all embedded in the culture and the traditions. As a mind of information, I think we should forget about the view that uh, there are so many variants of um, uh, tradition. And that we don't know what is it the same thing to do of European records? <laughs> Not the same but but that is why you are a trained professional, how to sift the truth from the chart. So please let us take this seriously. Thank you very much. So I want to thank all who contributed. I will thank Atari for being the head of the group and for putting, making accessibility possible, going to all the old men I'm the youngest among the lot sitting here, so I can call them old men and old men. Yeah. Professor Dufino for 18 March, wow. taught me 71. We'll never forget that. So let's clap for all of us. And as we go out, we can continue the interaction another way. Thank you very much. to uh, Prof. Odote is that she is actually quite brilliant because she assembled a dream team, <laughs> an all-star team of all griots in the audience and up top here that they are the modern griots who are keeping this tradition alive. So she also was able to make sure that the question and answer section was only coming from experts as well. It's brilliant. So next week we have uh, the uh, next presentation, uh, again on Thursday, it will be at the same place, the same time. And also the video from last week is up. That was Dr. Asante's presentation. So with no further ado, I would like to declare the session over and to pass to Prof. Yeah. Awedova. Yeah, and thanks very much indeed. Uh, well, uh, it has whispered in my ear that at this uh, important, uh, very singular, very unique ceremony, should not be allowed to pass without a word of congratulation, a word of uh, thanks for the Director of the History of Penn Studies. So on behalf of Professor Akusu Adumako Ampofo, who is the Director of this Institute, I'd like to express the Director's uh, appreciation, as well as that of the entire fellowship of the Institute, for this important, uh, eye-opening, educative ceremony that we've all experienced today. So thanks very much indeed. It doesn't happen like this all the time. So it is a very similar event, and I'm happy that this is being captured for uh, broadcasting outside this country, in fact, everywhere, for the uh, education and information of the entire country, the entire world, uh, on what the East African Studies seeks to do and does all the time. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you once again for coming and see you here again next week. <laughs>